Things that are mysterious have a way of creating curiosity. The need to know has driven people to explore the unknown. People today are still explore, exploring the depths of the ocean and sending shuttles into space and putting robots on planets, all trying to solve the mystery of the unknown. And who can truly comprehend galaxies that are millions of light years away or oceans that are so deep and so vast that every now and then they reveal a creature that we thought at one time to be extinct. But it is hunger and it is desire that causes people to go on in the search after these kinds of things. And you and I tonight are doing the same thing. But what we are after tonight is more vast than the ocean and greater than the galaxies. We're after the one tonight who created it all with just a word. Somebody say just a word. He said, let there be, and there was. And I'm telling you, that same God here tonight, he is still the same God. Hallelujah. He is the everlasting God. The God that spoke the world into existence can speak a word into your life tonight and transform your life. Just a word. See, they're, they're, no matter how far they go or what kind of rocket they build, they will never reach the end of space or never explore the depths of the ocean. But I want you to know we have a God tonight that can be reached. You don't need a rocket to touch him. You don't need a submarine to get there. All you need is faith because faith touches God. Faith is your link to the answer that you need tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith can reach further than your mind can comprehend. So there comes a point we've got to stop trying to figure it all out and be like Jesus said, oh, let believe. Because how can we comprehend all that he is? The Bible tells us he created the host of heaven. Astronomers estimate that the observable universe, what we can see through a telescope, has more than 170 billion galaxies. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, has over 400 billion stars in it. And the Bible said, God calls them all by name. Now think about that. You outside after church is over and if the clouds aren't in the way, look up at the stars in the sky and try to count as many as you can and know that God calls every one of those stars by name. He knows every one of them. Don't you think he knows something about you and something about me? Oh, yes, he does. He commands them, and the Bible said they stand in their place. How does God do it? The Bible said by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, and not one faileth. Go outside and look up at the stars and see the might and the strength of your God. They're standing there tonight because he's holding them by his power. And friend, you've got to realize you're going to make it because God is holding you by his power. Does anybody no God has got his hand on you and nobody can pluck you out of God's hand yes, sir. Yes, sir. oh hallelujah if he can keep the stars in place he can hold you in his hand tonight the Bible said he never faints and he never goes weary. Our God never fails tonight. How many of you know you serve a God that will not and has never failed hallelujah, hallelujah. he is infinite in all that he does he is infinite in all that he is. He is endless and boundless and limitless and immeasurable and inexhaustible. God has never and God will never lose his power. So why don't the weak say, I am strong because I've got a God on my side and God is not going to fail me. How many believe he's not going to fail you? Oh, he never gets weary. I said he never gets weary. Your God is not exhausted tonight. Your God is not washed up tonight. Your God is not sitting somewhere saying I can't do it anymore and I can't take anymore. Your God is inexhaustible. Your God is not weary. He never gets weary hearing about my problem. I don't care how many times you pray. He never gets weary hearing about your problem. He never gets weary hearing my praise. Come on, they say you cannot give God, you cannot praise God. 
I said he never gets weary hearing my praise. He never gets weary of moving the mountains out of my way. He never gets weary of healing my body. He never gets weary moving the devil out of my way. Does anybody know you've got a God tonight that when you're weak, he is still strong. Hallelujah. And you've got to learn how to lean on him. Somebody say I'm leading on him. Oh, Oh, I said when you're weak, he's strong. Hallelujah. When you can't take it, he can. See, God guaranteed you. God said, I'll not only carry you, God said, I'll carry your load at the same time. A story was told one time of an Ethiopian woman who was walking down the road carrying a big water pitcher on her head. She was struggling to carry the water pitcher and a man came by in a cart and he said, ma'am, he said, let me give you a, 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 dry, a lift or whatever, he said, to the, into town so you won't have to struggle with it. So as he carried the woman on the cart, he noticed that as she got in and after a little while going down the road, the woman still had her hand up on the pitcher and the pitcher was still up on the top of her head. When he got to where she was going, he looked down and he said, ma'am, he said, I offered to carry you and to bring you uh, you carry your load. He said, why in the world did you still carry that thing on your head? She said, because you said you would carry me. You never said nothing about carrying my load. But let me tell you something tonight. There is a God that can not only carry you, he can carry your load. It don't matter how big it is, how big of a burden you got. He said, casting all your care upon me because I care for you. Does anybody know he's still strong enough to do what you need him to do? Hallelujah. Then you got to realize God is there. We need to live with an awareness that God is always right there. Don't matter if you can't feel him, he's still there. If you can't hear him, he's still there. If you look around, you don't see him anywhere, he's still there. There is nowhere that we can evade the presence of our God. David said, if I ascend into hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there will your hand lead me and hold me up. Does anybody know he's still there? Oh, he's in the midst of your storm. He's down in the valley. You'll find him in the fire tonight. You'll find him shut in the mouth of the lion. In the lion's den, our God is there. And he is a strength you need to get you through. Hallelujah. I said he is the strength you need to get through. Hallelujah. See, God doesn't guarantee you strength just day by day. If he said to me, I will be with you all the way, even until the end, I have strength for every day. Hallelujah. And God gives us strength because he understands every one of us have weaknesses. No matter how strong you seem to be, you and I have a weakness. A weakness that can leave us powerless and leave us debilitated. And the thing is, God understands our frailty and God understands our weakness. David said, who is man that they aren't mindful of him? David understood how frail man can be and how weak we can be and how we are so wrapped up and bound up by vices and different things. David understood the frailty and the weakness of man and so does God. But the fact of it is, God doesn't make excuses for it. No. No. Even though God understands you and I have weakness, He doesn't overlook it and He doesn't dismiss it. God never looks at you and I and says, well, because you have this weakness, I guess I'll let you go and it'll be all right if you feel like quitting and, I, and it'll be all right if you don't feel like coming to church and it'll be all right if you don't feel like praising me tonight. No, God understands we have a weakness, but God never dismisses it. God never one time said our weakness is a good excuse for anything. See, weakness is not an excuse. Weak people use weak excuses. Because our weakness becomes a crutch for us to stop trying. And God never told us it's okay to stop trying. See, the Bible tells us in our weakness, God gives us grace to make it despite our weakness. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10, Paul, Paul says this, he said, talking about the thorn in the flesh, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. 
And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmity, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. Now, what is Paul talking about? Paul is saying you cannot lump weakness all into one category. There's two different kinds of weakness. There is sin weakness, and then there is weakness from going through trials and tests. Paul is not saying that God gets strong out of our sin. When we talk about weakness, the first thing we always talk about, well, I know I may gossip a little bit, and I may not pay my tithes all the time. And I, You know, we think about those kinds of weaknesses. What? You know, we, we talk about th those as sins. And, 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 and Paul tells us, he said, listen, he said, God doesn't glory, he said, in our sin. He said, God glories in our infirmities. He glories in our infirmity. So, so he said, God's strength is not made perfect in our sin. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. For Paul said, for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. In other words, Paul said, Paul was telling the Lord, listen, you've got to move this affliction out of me. You've got to take this affliction from me because I can't keep doing what I'm doing without when I've got this affliction in my life. But the Lord said to him, he said, no, I'm not going to take it from you, but I'm going to use your weakness to showcase my power. Because how many people looked at Paul and said, I don't know how in the world you're still doing what you're doing when you feel the way you feel and when you're putting up with what you're putting up with. But that's where the miracle was. How many times have people looked at you and said, I don't know how you're making it. And you can look at them and say, I'm only getting through by the grace of God because the grace of God is strong enough when I can't make it on my own. God makes us strong. Friend, you've got to realize whatever it is you're finding here tonight, you can make it through it because grace says you can. That's why the Bible said, I and the children that the Lord have given me are for signs and wonders in Israel. Let me tell you something. Friend, people are going to look at you and say, how in the world are you doing it? And you can tell them, God is my strength. God is my strength. Grace is still strong enough. Faith is strength. Faith makes you strong. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 40, 34, the Bible said, out of weakness, we're made strong. Uh -huh. See, faith in God has no history of failure. If anybody's ever had faith in God, then I can tell you, you can't stand up and tell me, God failed me. No, sir, if you have faith in God, God always comes through. Faith in God has no history of failure or history of defeat. You can look all through the Bible and you can read in Hebrews chapter 11 and see, read about people who did the impossible through the power of faith. God did not fail them, but out of their weakness they were made strong. I'm telling you something, friend. You've got to realize something. If God is for you, you're going to make it despite all hell against you. So God strengthens us in our weakness. But weakness can become a liability. Because weakness creates bad judgment. Samson's weakness for foreign women was his undoing. I always thought to myself, were there no good looking women in Israel that he couldn't find a woman there? <laughs> I mean, what was it about these foreign women that kept him running over to the Philistines. And here he was flirting with the world and thinking he was invincible. You know, our strength sometimes can be a curse. I said our strength sometimes can be a curse. Sometimes the things that we're the strongest in can end up making us fall quicker than the things we're weak in. Because there comes a point, I've, I've, I've seen preachers fall that they thought they were invincible. And they could do whatever they wanted to do and nobody could tell them what to do. And here they are tonight, backslidden, falling out of grace. Because sometimes our strength becomes a liability too.
Samson thought he was invincible. Do what everyone do. Flirting with Delilah, laughing at her, tricking her, making jokes, saying, well, if you do this, he said, I shall become weak and as another man. And she kept getting frustrated. She said, Samson, don't you love me? Samson had to have been the stupidest man on the face of the earth. All muscle and no brains. For her to sit there and say, Samson, tell me what I can do to bind you and to hurt you. And for him to say, oh, just do this right here and I shall become weak and as another man. Stupid. <laughs> there were times when I pastored my church, I wanted to call some of my saints in the office and say, are you stupid? I know some of you may get offended at that, but let me tell you something. If you could hear yourself sometimes. If we could hear ourselves sometimes. We say some of the dumbest stuff. We do some of the dumbest things. And we don't even realize half the time what we're doing and what we're saying. And it's the truth. And he's flirting with her. He's just playing with her. Just, well, do this and do that. He said, I shall become weak. And as another man, let me tell you, there's a problem when the church wants to be like the world. I preached about it last night. There's a problem when the church wants to be like the world. But here Samson was flirting with the world, and it cost him his freedom, it cost him his vision, and it took away his strength. Do you understand our strength is a problem for the devil and he's got to find a way to weaken you in order to shut down the plan of God? Our strength is a problem for him. That is why when we find ourselves becoming a church that worships God, it becomes a strength and the devil hates it. When you find yourself becoming a prayer warrior, the devil hates it. When he finds you becoming a praiser, he hates it. A giver, he hates it. When you start witnessing, he hates it. When you start loving folks, he hates it. Because it becomes our strength. And our strength is a problem for the devil. Oh, shut up on the lamb of You and I were destined to be different. We got to get the world out of us. If we expect to win the world, we've got to get the world out of us. All of these weaknesses and all these things, these habits uh, that we do and these things that we listen to, the things we say, the things sometimes we don't even realize what we're doing is a weakness that is destroying the fabric of who we are. And we've got to get it out of us and get more of God in us if we expect uh, to win the loss. God is calling men and women in 2015 to be the kind of man he called Samson to be. Not the kind flirting with the world, but the kind breaking off the cords and breaking off the chains and saying, where is the Lord? Let me tell you, we need to be that kind of man. I'm talking about picking up the jawbone of a donkey and slaying heaps upon heaps upon heaps upon heaps. Samson was striking one, grabbing him and throwing him behind him. Hitting another, grabbing him and throwing him behind him. And before he knew it, he turned around and they were piled up in heaps. Why? Because that's the kind of victory that God has called you and I to have tonight. Not to be weak and fail and useless and for the devil to walk all over us but to slay our heap upon heap. Grab him and throw him behind you. Destroy and throw him behind you until everything that was in front of you is now behind you. Shut up, brother, Bahusa. But a moment of weakness can cause a lifetime of pain. A moment of weakness can cause a lifetime of pain. It's the wearing us down. It's it's the pressure, the breaking of our will is what the enemy is out to do. The enemy has to wear us down because when we are strong in the Lord, we are unstoppable. We are not limited to natural strength. 
I don't, I don't believe Samson was Arnold Schwarzenegger on steroids. I just don't believe that. I don't, I don't believe he was some beefed up, ripping with muscle, just going around grunting and ugging and, you know. He, he wasn't that kind of a man. I think Samson was just an average looking fella. Because if he was big and muscled up and out there pumping weights, people could go by and people could say, well, I can tell you why he can do all those things. Look at how strong he is. Look at, how many, look at all the muscles he has on him. But I don't think he was like that. I think he was just an average looking fella. The people went by and said when he was sitting there grinding corn in a Philistine city with his eyes poked out and no hair on his head, that the Bible said they went by and laughed at him. You mean to tell me this is the man that we're so afraid of? This is the man that when they spoke his name put fear into our hearts? Is this the guy that we couldn't capture, couldn't stop? And they walked by and laughed at him. As he was standing there with no eyes and no strength. And Samson... <laughs> is brought out to the pillars. And they want to make fun of him. One more good laugh at Samson. And I want to tell you that I can preach about Samson all day long because we're all just like him. When we are doing what we're supposed to do, we are unstoppable. When we're living for God the way we're supposed to, nothing can stand in our way. But when we're like Samson, when his weakness has got a hold of him, we're all just like him. That we look and we say, God, strengthen me just one more time. They brought Samson out there. They said, let's make sport of him. We're going to have a big dinner and a big celebration to our God Dagon for delivering Samson over into our hands. Let's bring him out into the temple and let's make sport of him. Let's laugh at him. Because we once were so afraid of him, but now we're no longer afraid of him. He's got no strength. He's got no eyes. He's got no freedom. And they brought him out to the pillars. And the Bible said Samson stood there and leaned on the pillars and said, God, strengthen me just once more. He said, Lord, I know if you'll give me the strength just one more time that I can do what you call me to do. And the Bible said he pushed with all of his might. Let me tell you, all he needed was just enough strength for one last push and one last fight. Let me tell you something, church. We are closer now to the coming of the Lord than we've ever been before. And I need God to give me the strength for one more push. Has anybody got one more push in you? One more fight left in you? But here's the good news. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. If God will give me the strength, I can do it. How many know if God will give you the power, you can do the impossible for God. Get ready, church. Push. Push with everything that you got. For God will guard you with strength. Oh, they that stumble are girded with strength. Let me know there's life after failure. There's life after you fall. There's life after you stumble. There's life after your weakness. They that stumble are girded with strength. Hallelujah. One reason why we feel so weak is that we're caught in between waiting and a miracle. I'm telling you, the waiting room is not easy. Waiting on God. And do you know, that is the problem a lot of times with me, maybe you too. The secret to a move of God is waiting on God. Waiting. David said to the Lord, he said, this group came up to fight. He said, shall I go up against him? The Lord said, go up for I shall deliver him into your hand. He went up. Now notice something. David kind of gets into a routine. Another group comes up. David said, Lord, shall I go up as before? The Lord said, go up for I shall deliver them into your hand. 
David says, Lord, another group. Shall I go up against them as before? God says, no. I want you to stand here and wait. See, sometimes we can, if we want to, we can have church. We, we can sing all the right songs, do all the right shouting, and we can create an atmosphere. We, we can leave this place and say, man, we had church tonight. Now, I've, I'm not one of these believers in, well, I've, I've heard people say, man, we had church tonight. Oh, yeah, what'd your pastor preach? He never got to preach. We had church. Let me tell you, you ain't had church, you had preaching. Now, I didn't get a lot of amens on that, but I don't care. Yeah, I rarely have a service that I don't preach. Rarely. I mean, I'm telling maybe once a year that I don't preach. And that's usually never my, my fault. Pastor, we'll have a move of God before we're time to preach. The pastor say, man, I'm just like, do what you want to do. If you want me to preach, I'll preach. And he'll usually send them home. It's not really, you ain't had church, you had preaching. God does not confirm worship. He does not confirm running the aisles. He confirms his word with signs following. Why? Because we had the hardest time waiting for God to do something. Waiting is a secret. He said, Lord, shall I go up as before? The Lord said, no. He said, I want you to wait here behind the mulberry trees. And when you see here the sound of a going in the tops of the trees, get yourself ready and go. What was he telling David? He said, the secret, he said, is waiting. How many times have we missed a move of God because we're too big of a hurry? How many times have we Miss the moment because we just didn't have the strength anymore to wait. Waiting is not easy when you feel your strength leaving you. See, waiting is a hard battle to fight because we battle fears and we, qu we have questions. Do, you know, Lord, I'm waiting here, but do I have the strength to hold on? The Bible said even the young men, the youth shall faint and grow weary. So people you thought would never struggle, they all have times of weakness and times when they don't know how to wait. Happens to everybody. Waiting. The thing about waiting is this. Waiting is not a passive sit-in. Just sitting around. There was a, there was, you know, people have been protesting here lately. How many of you hear all the protesting going on? Yeah, I, I want to protest against the protest. Can you do that? Can you? <laughs> I'm like, you people are wasting your time and you're not getting paid for being out there and, you know, go to work. Just Go home, get a hold of God, and go to work, and it'll be all right. And th these people were protesting police brutality. <laughs> and, uh, and so they were out there. They were all just laying on the ground. There was no picketing. There was no hooping and hollering. There was no shouting. There was no nothing. They were just laying in the street. And they, they had these little signs set up all around them protesting police brutality and there was the police sitting around protecting them. <laughs> and it was the most craziest thing. I mean, if you got something to protest, protest. If you're just going to be stupid, be stupid somewhere else. To me, waiting on God is not just sitting around. And that's what we think it is. So now we just sit around and wait around and maybe something will get done. No. Waiting on God. See, passive people, they've got a lot of wishbone, but no backbone. Well, I just wish somebody do something. I wish God would just do this. I just wish this and I just wish that. Waiting on God is being patient and surrendering to God, surrendering to God's timing. In other words, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait on God. But while I'm waiting, I'm going to worship Him. Come on. Do you have the will to wait? Do you have what it takes to outlast your fears? Do you have what it takes here tonight to say I will claim the promise, I will rest in the promise, I will believe an expectation because in the waiting, I'm looking for an answer to come. If you're waiting on the bus, you're looking for the bus. If I say I'm waiting on God, I'm looking for God. And in the process, when I'm waiting on God, I'm going to give him the glory for what I know is already on the way. I'm not sitting around hoping and wishing. I'm looking up to the hill from which coming my help. My help is on the way. My strength is going to come. Shut up, 
cuando de la lemurusa. So they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There comes a moment you will exchange your weakness for strength. And the renewing is a life-changing moment. Somebody in this place tonight is going to experience a life-changing moment. Let me tell you something. The Bible said in verse 31, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. I'm telling you here tonight, with every flap of that eagle's wings, he goes to another level. And I'm telling you the will of God that God is taking this church to another level. As some of you here tonight and say, God, I've been weak and I don't know if I'm going to make it. But God said, get ready for strength to come on you because God said, I'm going to give you the strength to go to the next level that I have called you to. Is anybody in this building tired of being on this level? And you're ready for the next stage of your life. Shut up around the Oh, I said this church is headed to another level. Hallelujah. David said, It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. I'm telling you, God's got a high place for this church. God said, I'm going to develop you, and I'm going to make you into the person I called you to be, and you're not going to stay down at the base of the mountain. God said, there's a mountain in front of you, and the devil said, you'd never climb it, but get ready in 2015 to stand upon and walk upon your high place. Has anybody got an expectation of something big happening in your life? Oh, the enemy said you're too weak, but God said I'll gird you with strength. God said I will dress you up and I will clothe you and I will equip you with everything that you need to do what I've called you to do. God said I am providing everything that you need to defeat the enemy that stands in your way. Strength to win the battle. God clothing you with the victory. He, David went on to say, he teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Thy right hand hath holden me up. Thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They have fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle and thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. God said, get ready because I'm about to clothe you in power where you've never been before. And you're going to mount up with wings as eagles. And the weak are going to be strengthened by the power of God. Somebody praise him in this building tonight. Let's stand together tonight. Some of you have sat around for days saying, God, I don't know how I'm going to make it, but God said, get ready because I'm about to strengthen you. It's, it's a hard thing coming to grips with your weakness. I had a series of setbacks last year that I thought I'd never be the same. And it was a long process. I hurt my knee putting a new roof on my house. Was laid up for weeks with, on crutches. Uh, the worst time of my life, I feel like. I don't see how people walk on crutches. I tried to go through the living room and trip on them. I turned 42 a few days ago, and I, my wife got on to me. And she needed to. Because I, I kept talking about how weak I felt. And I'll tell you, I, I had some moments last year that, man, I, I thought, man, I'm turning into an old man quick. <laughs> yeah. The curse of the 40s, I guess. My wife finally got on to me a while back. She said, you've got to stop saying that stuff. <laughs> And I said, really? <laughs> she said, you do. She said, you need to stop talking like that. She said, you're still young. Right. I don't know who she's trying to convince, me or her. <laughs> she said, you're still young. She said, you're, you're, you're going to get back. 
where you were, and I, I slowly feel myself getting back there. And it's, it's a hard thing. When you look back, and I was in my 20s, man, I could do just about anything. I could flip and do flips and grab anything, pick it up, run with it, and, you know, Superman. You know, and, and now I try to do those things. I have an 18-year-old son that, uh, that I hope is not stronger than me because I still want to show him who's the boss every now and then. But I'm afraid I just may be a little too late. <laughs> but it's a hard thing when you look and say, I understand I'm weak. And we all have moments of weakness. We all have times in our life. Some of you right now are a walking miracle. A walking miracle. How you made it is a miracle. <laughs> the devil has designed some things against you that if they would have worked. My goodness. There's some of you right now that you're, you're at the weakest point you've ever been in your life. And you need to realize something. Every day you get up, it's a miracle. Amen. How many times have we got up and just take for granted? We get up, we never, never think about anything. Before I get out of my bed, I thank God. I started last year going through a series of transitions in my ministry and in my life. The Lord began to take me through a journey. That was absolutely the worst and best thing that the Lord has ever took me through. And one of the things that I developed during that time was a prayer life. That when I laid down at night, it didn't matter if I just got finished praying. When I, my head hit the pillow, I would thank God for a good day. And I'd thank Him for a good night's sleep. And before I get out of bed in the mornings, My wife will tap me on the shoulder and say, Honey, the call is ready. I said, Hold on, I'm praying to be right there. And I said, Lord, I thank you for a good night. And I want to thank you for this day. And before I ever get out of the bed, I said, Lord, I want to thank you for the armor of God. I put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the loins good about with truth. I go through the whole armor of God because I realize that the armor of God returns strength to the powerless. And when I get out of my bed in the morning, I realize what a miracle it is that I am alive. And friend, tonight, if some of you are the same way, you understand God's given you the strength. There's no way you've got it yourself. I've been in services where I didn't feel like preaching physically, did not feel like preaching. And when the Spirit of the Lord got on me, I felt invincible. There's a church, this is going to sound funny, but there's a church I preach at, they have a real high platform. Whenever I go there and preach, I get right out on the edge of that thing. Just right out on the edge. And every time I preach there, Pastor, it's going to sound foolish, I picture myself just walking right off that thing one day and walking right on air, just right out across there. Because when you're in, under the anointing, you feel invincible. Then after the anointing lifts, you realize just how weak you really are. And how much you need Him. How much you really need Him. And the Bible says this, in Psalms chapter 8 verse 2, that God has ordained praise to the mouth of babes and sucklings. That the Bible talks about worship is a foundation for you and I to stand on. That worship creates a place for you and I to find our strength. Praise gives us the strength to silence the enemy tonight. Strength to fight back. The joy of the Lord in Nehemiah chapter 8. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord. When's the last time you really felt fullness of joy? When's the last time you left a service and you're like, whew, Man, I feel awesome. I feel great. See, we judge a person's strength by their physical appearance. 
Gideon had defeated the kings of the Midianites and the Bible said they captured the two kings of the Midianites and Gideon said to bring them out and they stood there and Gideon called upon his youngest son to go and slay these two kings but the Bible said he was afraid and couldn't do it kind of reminds me of God God's already won the battle and we don't need to be afraid to fight but these kings said to Gideon, they said, as a man is, so is his strength. As a man is, so is his strength. In other words, we judge a person's strength by their physical appearance. But real strength is not in muscle. Real strength is in determination. See, you never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. And there's something about weak minds that is hard to comprehend strong-spirited people. Yeah. But if you and I are going to make it, we, we have to be willing to be mocked. Criticized. Misunderstood. Hated. We have to realize that there's going to be weak moments in all of our lives. There's going to be moments when we don't feel so churchy we don't feel so saved we don't feel like we can get through another day we don't feel like I can deal with any more criticism or, or any more fight from the adversary but you've got to realize something God doesn't abandon you in your weakness Job said in Job chapter 23 verses 1 through 6 he said even today is my complaint bitter my stroke is heavier than my groaning oh that I knew where I might find him that I might come even to his seat I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he was saying to me. Listen to what he said. Will he plead against me with his great power? He said, no. Job said, but he would put strength in me. Job said, Lord, you don't walk away from people just because they're weak. He said, but Lord, in our weakness, you make us strong. Church, I'm telling you tonight, I came here to pray for some people who are weak tonight. That God says, I want to make you strong. All day long, from the moment I woke up this morning, the Lord was speaking to me. He said, I want you to preach about strength tonight. He said, because my people need strength for one more push. Do you realize there's a lot of work in front of this church? <coughs> I said, there's a lot of work in front of this church tonight. There's a great revival coming to Wharton, Texas, and there's a great amount of work to be done by this church. And you're going to need your strength to do it. And the Lord said to tell this church, I will strengthen her to do it. God will give you the strength. God will give you the strength. God will give you the finances. God will give you the people. God will supply your every need tonight to do what He's called you to do. What He... Would he plead against you with his great power? No. He'll put strength in you tonight. He'll put strength in you tonight. How many of you need God to put strength in you right now? Lift your hands to him tonight. Oh, God of glory, strengthen us tonight, Lord. Strengthen us with your power. God, strengthen us with your power. God, I can't get through this on my own. I need you to strengthen me with your power. Lord, I can't face it alone anymore. I need you to strengthen me with your power. God, my finances are in a shambles. I need you to strengthen me in my weakness. Come on, church, lift your hands and worship him.
to lift your hands and your heart and open your mouth and praise him tonight. Oh, he is he. Hallelujah. Oh, he is here tonight. Shut the Lord and let the Lord with the uh, yellow shirt on right there. Can I pray for you tonight? Come right here. Sister, would you help me pray? Sister, if you just lift your hands to the Lord. Sister, you know what a rubber band is? A rubber band. 